most important skills you want to develop as a meditator is to find where your home base is. The area in the body where the, the breath feels good and the mind feels at home when it's focused there. You want to know that spot and learn how to work with it. Learn how to come back to it as quickly as you can if you've lost it. This will take some exploration, experimenting with different spots and just noticing where your mind tends to go, sometimes unintentionally. But there's a spot where it seems like it wants to settle down, and it feels good there. It feels right being there. And John Lee gives a list. The top of the head, the middle of the forehead, right at your palate. in your neck, in the middle of the chest, right above the navel. Those are the main ones, but you may find that you have a spot of your own. In addition to identifying it, you want to learn how to work with the energy there. The reason that John Lee focuses on these spots is because the breath energy tends to be very sensitive in those spots. There are spots when you find yourself tensing up, say, around fear or anger. The tightness comes very quickly there. You want to be sensitive to that so you can let it disperse. This is the spot that you carry into your walking meditation. And from walking meditation, you carry it into your life. In walking meditation, you've got two other things that you have to balance with your focus on that spot. And that's the movement of the body and also your surroundings. When you're doing regular walking meditation, your surroundings are pretty simple. Simply make sure you don't walk off the end of the path or off the side of the path. No one to turn around. But it is more than you have to th deal with when you're just sitting here. Similarly with the movement of the body. It's a very basic movement, just walking. And it's good to get familiar with that basic movement, to notice how you carry the body and how the way you carry the body has an impact on that spot that you've discovered. So you've got three things to focus on. And in addition to that, of course, there's the ability, once you have a comfortable spot of meditation, <coughs> a comfortable spot of focusing on the breath energy, is learning how to allow that comfortable energy to spread throughout the body. Again, you work with this first while you're sitting, so that when you're spreading energy through the body, you're not spreading harmful energy or tight energy or whatever. You're letting it radiate out from a spot that feels really good. And as you're walking, you try to maintain that sense of feeling really good without clamping down on it. This is one of the important skills of meditation as well, knowing how to maintain focus on a part of the body without clamping down on the circulation of blood in that area, or tightening up the muscles in that area. It's an instinctive reaction we all have, and it's something that we have to unlearn. If you want the concentration really to feel at home. And so as you're walking, try to see how the energy of the walking or the movement of the walking relates to that spot in the, that you've chosen, the energy in that spot. And see if you can allow the energy to flow naturally from that spot into the body as it's walking. And as you learn how to protect that spot in spite of the movement of the body, in spite of the fact that you have to be aware of your surroundings. And John Lee gives an image of having really good food that you want to protect to make sure flies don't land on your food. The Buddha's image is of having a bowl of oil balanced on your head. You don't want a single drop to spill. I like a John Lee's image because it gives you a sense of how precious this is. This is something you don't want to throw away. You want to learn how to maintain this. 
because eventually you want to carry it into more complex activities as you deal with other aspects of your life, being able to handle those three main areas of interest. You've got this central spot that you want to maintain, and you've got your own activities, and you've got the activities around you. Now, as you go out into daily life, at work, at home, your own activities get more complex, and what's going on around you gets more complex as well. But you still want to be able to maintain that sense of a still and nourishing center, something that's precious, something you want to protect. There's so much in our lives that we tend to throw away. We throw away a lot of the time that we have. We look at our society, and people seem to take a very cavalier attitude to all kinds of things. Things get thrown away very easily. Almost everything gets treated with disrespect. But you don't want to treat your own mind with disrespect, which is why you want to maintain this with an attitude of respect. And this is one of the reasons why we have this culture of respect here at the monastery. You're learning something really important. These are life and death matters, your ability to take care of your own mind. And not let the activities from outside come in and destroy your goodness, and not let your own unskillful tendencies overturn that bowl of oil. Or don't let the flies of your own unskillful tendencies come and lay eggs in your food. You want to respect this sense of the center, the mind's need for a home. Because after all, you are respecting your desire for true happiness, which society does not tend to encourage. But the Buddha says this is one of the things you really have to respect more than anything else. And John Munn has a nice image in one of his final Dharma talks. You're going into battle. And you've got a series of weapons. In terms of your concentration practice, that's your food. Mindfulness, all the other aspects of the practice are things that you need as a soldier. And the question of well, who's the soldier? It's your determination not to come back as the laughing stock of the defilements to suffer again and again. You've got to have that determination that this is something really important, something you really want. That's what you've got to protect. This is a truth of the will, and it doesn't just happen. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, well, just allow the mind to settle in, and it's just going to naturally grow without your having to really do anything about it. And in some cases that's true, but in a lot of areas you have to go against a lot of tendencies in the mind that seem natural. You have to really want not to suffer. Because, it's, again, it's all too often to just throw this away and say, what the hell? I just have a nice, easy life, normal life like everybody else. That's good enough. But it's not. As I was saying, there's aging, there's illness and death, there's separation. These are things you can't throw away. They come at you. And if the mind isn't prepared, if it isn't trained, if it doesn't have its inner resources well developed, you can suffer an awful, awful lot. So here's your opportunity not to suffer. You want to maintain that. It's your precious food. It's that bowl of oil which you want to maintain. So as we're sitting here, learn how to find it, learn how to maintain that sense of good energy, learn how to use that good energy as it spreads to the body, and then learn how to maintain the same sense of center as you get up and do walking meditation, as you deal with other issues in your life.
This is one thing you never want to throw away. No matter how strong the currents of the world come in from outside, no matter how strong your other contrary emotions come up from within, you don't want these things to overturn the ball of oil. You don't want them to overturn your plate of good food and dump it on the ground. Don't treat your desire for true happiness as something you can throw away. As John Lee once said, we're taught to let go of things, but we're not taught to let go like a poor person. You let go when you're rich. You've really got something good inside, okay, then you don't have to worry about holding on anymore when it's solidly there. But until you're there, this is something you really have to hold on to, look after, tend to, respect. Because it gives meaning and purpose to everything else.